Hi, hi everyone. So I, I think this is this should be the last session. I mean, in this room today, um, hopefully you enjoy the, uh, the the design summit the first day about this huge event, right? So uh, I think we are about to talk uh, something about QS, and uh, it's uh, you know a little bit fun stuff. And uh, okay, so let's get started. Uh, the term quality of service, right, refer to the user reservation or guarantee of certain status of the service quality. So running a cloud under the assumption that there should be unlimited resources for application to consume. And the cloud doesn't mean, uh, I mean, uh, constantly looking for you know, ways to observe the user perceived quality and uh, to, to do some dynamic tuning about the, their service level. So both of them should be based on some real-time data generated by the cloud itself, right? To address the QS in OpenStack, I think we look much beyond the traditional world and QS in network uh, area. And any resources where there exists the contention, uh, there goes needs for QS. So for example, CPU, uh, disk I.O., network I.O., so in this talk, uh, we will explore the current uh, status of QS in OpenStack, and uh, we will be looking at both what is possible now and what is right happening in each project track. Uh, we'll also share what we did in WebEx OpenStack deployment, how we built up the native QS as a service framework inside OpenStack, and how we tackle this problem uh, systematically. So, and. Uh, so here is a team. Uh, we come from China. And uh, uh, so my name is Ian. I'm called Platform Architect, uh, work for Cisco uh, inside WebEx Group. And uh, this is Li Ping, our senior software engineer, also work for Cisco, uh, active Neutron developers. And uh, this is Axela, so technologist of EMC, uh, I mean uh, Lab China branch, uh, very active developers around the Cinder project. And also, you know, there is a Simon to who is not here right now. It's a hand of China, uh, Cisco WebEx cloud services. So, so now I, I think uh, I'm I'm going to hand over to Excel to talk about you know some motivations and the project status about QS uh, in in overall. And greetings to the guests, and thank you for all attending our presentation. I know it's, it is close to the dinner, right? You are hungry, I guess. So why do we need a quality of service? There are quite a lot of different use cases if we are thinking about the enterprise context. Um, for example, there are many applications. The applications are the heart of all the services, internal, external, customer-facing, or IT-oriented in the enterprise. There can be applications such as very critical customer facing. Those websites are really important to the business. There can also be applications which are real time and plan very carefully of their resources in each of their quantum or time frame. There can also be a lot of batch jobs. They are much lower critical some are not even have a time deadline. They should uh, run on less important resources or run on whatever resource left on the cloud. So what do we need in such context? The first thing we need is to make sure that those high priority applications are always get what they need, always serving our customers the best. This question becomes even more complex and important on the cloud environment. On the cloud, all the applications share the same underlying infrastructure. They share resources like the computing host, the storage, the network. Because they share so much things, so we have to work hard to make sure that high priority applications are untouched when some other things goes wrong. For example, the virtualization is so much widely used. The virtualization consolidates all kinds of resources, 
and increase the resource utilization. But over committing, still have a risk that when a sudden spike workload comes, our application may fail to handle the workloads, particularly when there are a lot of virtual machines on one physical host. So, um, and we ha also have the application owners who are worrying about their noisy, noisy neighborhoods. Uh, we always hear about the complaining about that. So why do we need a qualitative service? We need uh, to, for, for us to manage all kinds of the cloud resources, such as computing, such as network, such as the storage. And we need the QoS to help us to make sure that those critical applications are always running well, always serving their best. And we also need the QoS to give us the confidence that the cloud can run things well, they are trustable, reliable, and are totally okay to run those mission-critical applications. So that's why, why we need QoS. And uh, thinking about the cloud, we always think about the question, how could we improve the total resource utilization? There are many ways. Um, given an application, we always want to give only how much resource the application needs. But in fact, we always give them more. Think about how you allocate a virtual machine on the cloud, on OpenStack. We need to consider the peak workload so we always allocate a virtual machine that are much larger than the application always be. This is the normal workload. They are changing according to time, but this is the virtual machine size. So there is a gap between those two. The gap creates the potential waste of cloud resource. Uh, with a good QoS, we can have a way to control how those applications consume those cloud resources. And if we have more granularities, for example, the granularities of per individual virtual machine QoS or granularities of per tenant QoS, we can control things better. And if we can also adjust the QoS settings in real time when the virtual machine is up and running, we have the flexibility. The gap can be then lower down because we can do things well and control it better. So the whole system can be even more powerful if we read the real-time feedback from the cloud. For example, how the cloud is running, how the virtual machines are scheduled, and how the resource is allocated. And we can analyze those feedbacks with some intelligent algorithms, some data mining skills, and then we can choose, always choose the best strategy dynamically when the cloud is up and running to ensure all the status are okay and uh, all the resource are leveraged. So um, well, the next vision is an application aware infrastructure. So what is an application aware infrastructure? Uh, so given we have a private cloud, there are, um, say, uh, and a long time running enterprise application on the cloud. We have a lot of time to see how the application runs to collect the data, both from the infrastructure level and the application level. And we can use all kinds of mining or analytics uh, techniques to find the hidden patterns. Because the private cloud is much different from the public cloud, on the private cloud, we usually host um, the enterprise application. The private cloud can be dedicated, uh, dedicatedly optimized for those enterprise applications. But uh, the public cloud is facing to the open space. There are too many applications on the cloud to run. The public cloud cannot optimize for the specialty of a private one. So after that, the patterns learned from the long time running application can be used on the cloud to improve how it performs. 
and the quality of service here becomes a way for the cloud to interact with its dwelling applications. The cloud and the application can somewhat interact and cooperate each other and makes the hosting environment more optimized. Next page. Thanks. And thinking about the current community status, there are a lot of um, existing KOS implementations in the current version of OpenStack. Wow, thank you for taking the photos. <laughs> yeah, I feel a lot happier. And um, there are many components that support KOS. For example, Cinder. Now, Cinder supports KOS in front end and back end. The front end KOS makes use of the hypervisor, for example, the QMU, to limit how much resource is consumed on the virtual machines. Uh, if you track the API workflow, you will see first the Nova API will be invoked, then it enters to into the RPC API, going to the message queue, and go to the compute, then Nova manager, then to the labor world, and eventually the C group. And thanks to the kernel, C group is very powerful. On the Nova part, oh, just forget one thing, at the backend uh, QS support by Cinder. And uh, how is the backend part uh, mm, provided by Cinder? The backend QS is backed by all kinds of uh, volume of vendors and their drivers. For example, the VMAX. The VMAX provides such as the service level objectives, such as the diamond level, the gold level, the silver level, or bronze one. You can specify different uh, specifications, QoS specifications from the command line or the horizon, and the Cinder will interpret those settings to the backend drivers and the backend uh, storages. If you search into the code for the keyword QoS or keyword QoS support, you will find a lot of code related to QoS in the Cinder volume of driver folder. And talking about the Nova side, the Nova provides the instance resource quota. By instance resource quota, the user can adjust the QoS settings in the virtual machine flavors to configure, say, the, how much CPU should be used, how much disk I/O throttle, or how much disk space the quotas. And currently, there are some problems about the memory support. These are related to the underlying kernel support. And uh, we also have a Neutron QoS API. The Neutron QoS API is recently supported in LibreVirt version. It works on the poor network and the poor port level. You can send API queries into Neutron and uh, specify the QoS specifications. The network QoS is supported and operated from the network perspective. And also, it would be very interesting that we can support, uh, if we can adjust or limit the QoS in the aggregated uh, bandwidth level. Next page. So why do we need to implement uh, the QoS framework by ourselves? Well, that's a good question. The first thing we want is to QoS, is QoS in more granularities. For example, the per individual virtual machine level or as a whole tenant. The tenant QoS can be very useful when we want to map the applications of different priorities to different tenants and uh, limit the resource usage on those tenants. Uh, this is quite a common use case in the enterprise condition. Say we have a lot of application owners and then they have a lot of different applications. Some are very critical to the business and some are less critical. We can create a lot of different tenants for those owners and on each tenant we set a different QS setting. So those granularities of QS help us a lot. 
And we also want to be able to adjust the QS settings in real time when the virtual machine is already up and running. So we love the flexibility. And we also want to watch the real-time feedback from virtual machine. For example, if we have, say, the CPU usage should be cut down by half, then we can watch the result from a centralized web console to make sure that, oh, it takes the works. And there can be a severe resource competition on certain virtual machine hosts. Uh, for example, if a um, program just went crazy because of a bug, the resource usage will crazily went high. We need a way to cage those crazy resource consumers and to make sure that our high priority applications are untouched. So here comes the QoS, and we need the QoS in real time. And we can also use QoS in other ways uh, you can imagine that on the highway, a lot of cars are trying to take more resource. In this condition, the resource is the road itself. If there is no odor, all the cars would collab, uh, collapse or collide with each other, and the overall performance won't be high. So we need some odors. We need the lanes on the road to make the application cooperate with each other to make the cars respect with each other. Even though um, seen from a, a certain car, its available resource is, it don't, it, uh, the available resource for it is less, but the overall performance can be improved. It works the same for the QoS condition. With a proper QoS setting, if we use QoS to limit uh, the resource usage of each application, and make them cooperate better, the overall performance can be improved. I have seen a test case of the MySQL. If we have, say, many MySQLs running, and uh, they collide the um, compete resource severely on the one host, after we have applied the QoS, the overall performance would be a little higher. And uh, there are other ways to leverage QoS. We may want to um, pin the vCPUs to different physical cores to isolate those resource competitors and to gain some performance. When the competitors has been isolated, their cache competition, competitions can be less and uh, they can mm, cooperate uh, better with others. The overall performance can gain a little bit or gain uh, greatly. So to explore how we can address those needs about the QoS, we have implemented our own framework, the QoS as a service. So after that, it would be the design and implementation and discussions. Let's invite Li Ping to give us the deep dive. Thank you, Li Ping. Okay, thank you. Uh, here is our functional decomposition. So as uh, uh, Excel said that uh, our QS should not only based on VM level. So we think the QS is more important based on tenant level. So uh, we we could we should could dip, uh, we should could create the QS groups uh, rules uh, that is include the CPU. Uh, CPU QS rules, disk QS rules, and the network QS rules, and group them and uh, uh, assign them with tenant. Uh, and uh, this should be uh, done in dynamically. Uh, and uh, by, doing the, uh, by doing this, OpenStack admin also need a, a web UI to monitor the uh, real time the resource usage, uh, include the CPU resource usage, disk resource usage, or network resource usage, uh, both in tenant level and uh, the VM level. So we have three uh, rules when we use uh, uh, w when we use this feature. Uh, so we have tenant admin. Uh, this guy is only care about the VM seeing his tenant. So he need a uh, uh, monitoring uh, for him to uh, know the real time resource usage. And for OpenStack ad admin, he, he he may don't care the VM resource usage. He care more about the uh, tenant level resource usage. So we need to aggregate the uh, resource usage by 
uh, project for them uh, to know which project is using their uh, resources and we, we need to, to make sure our core uh, core applications is using more resources and uh, there is a panel for OpenStack admin to uh, just uh, to adjust the QS rules uh, for the tenants and for the VMs. So uh, there is another guy who is uh, the tenant DevOps engineering. Uh, this guy is the app uh, application owner. Uh, they develop the uh, application and they opt the operation the applications. So uh, they, uh, we give, give them permissions to uh, call the VM level QS APIs to control the QS in their tenant uh, because that in some case uh, he may get alert that uh, some of his uh, VM is uh, very abnormal so he can use these kind of APIs to control the resource usage. So this is an example of that, that you, can, uh, you can see the uh, VM running status in the project so uh, you can, uh, the tenant admin can get the, can get the VM resource usage percentage in his tenant from the, uh, from this, and this is a uh, real time to uh, get. And uh, this is a, uh, uh, this is a, a UI for the OpenStack admin to create the tenant level QS uh, groups and he can uh, define the different, uh, different uh, QS uh, levels and assign them with the project. Uh, once he assign the, uh, the, the group with the project, it will be, deploy uh, it will be uh, applied in all the VMs in this tenant. And also, uh, OpenStack I mean can also uh, modify the uh, QS setting for one specified uh, visual machines. Uh, once you uh, modify the QS setting of one visual machine, it will overwrite the uh, rules you set in the QS groups. So, this. Uh, the Im implementation of this is very straightforward, I think. Um, we add uh, exten extension APIs in Nova and uh, uh, write a QS manager in the Nova computer, and uh, uh, we have a driver which is using uh, C groups to uh, control the C uh, CPU, disk, and uh, network. So, uh, till now, any question? Well, so, so feel free to ask any question if you know that there is some. So I, I think the idea is quite uh, straightforward. Is uh, um, I, being as a cloud admin, right? Uh, uh, you sort of like you run some you know road infrastructure. So every VM maybe be treated as a car. So every VM will have uh, equally position to get resources from your road infrastructure. But the idea here is not every car should be treated equally, right? There is some car like ambulance, right? When some accident, uh, traffic accident happening, this car need move very fast, faster than any other cars. And here we, we, we should produce a way to let them to just, you know, tell, tell the car to me, oh, I am ambulance, uh, please let me run faster than any, uh, than any way else, right? So, so I, I think the idea here is quite uh, straightforward. Uh, also, I mean, inside WebEx, uh, we run some uh, real-time media engine stuff, right? So those kind of stuff is really, I mean, king of our business. So this had to be, it, it's, I, I think it's fair to say that those kind of, uh, of VM uh, should get better performance than the web tier. So, and being at the cloud main and being at the group to who turn it on, we have to produce those techno technologies to let the tenant main uh, to do those kind of, you know, the close the feedback loop, those kind of thing. So, 
I think the rest, uh, the rest part should be a little boring, <laughs> boring, right? Uh, so, like uh, I think Axara and Riping mentioned, uh, we have the uh, some command line interface inside the Noah client. Uh, for example, you you can uh, get your tenant QS group with all the tenant, and you can show the particular uh, I mean the QS settings for your uh, for for particular QS group, right? And uh, uh, project uh, we could uh, create, uh, I mean a project-based QS group, and uh, you can get, uh, uh, I mean the QS status for a particular project, and uh, also you know update the status, and assign this QS group to a uh, to a attendant also on the right. This is command command line interface. And also, you know, uh, beyond the tenant based QS, there is a hypervisor based QS. Uh, for example, you can do this such kind of thing per VM uh, inside, you know, any of your running hypervisor. For example, you can list all the, I mean, the hypervisor based QS status. And also, you can show, you know, one particular VM and inside one particular uh, hypervisor was the QS status, right? And also updates the settings. Those those are you know command line interface, and there is some you know RESTful interface as well. So for the uh, I mean the horizontal stuff. So if you want to build some portals, so those are nice RESTful API you can consume. The feature wise is all the same. So and there is a Noah debug to help you get the detailed information about the uh, request and response format. Also, you know, hypervisor based QS settings. And uh, I, I think uh, Axara mentioned, I mean, being as called mean or the tenant mean, uh, there is a d desire for them, for a team like that, you know, to get a real time uh, status about our, um, I mean, my project maybe. So we produce some, you know, the diagnostic APIs for the tenant to consume. So that this is just you know, trying to close the feedback loop. First, you get your running status, and second, you let me know you are, you know, you'll be authorized to, you know, hooking those QS API, and a next step, you you hook up your QS API, and I think cloud just you know, give you what you want. So. So and I, I think in order to uh, I, along the way we in zero really great learning from the OpenStack communities you know uh, for example the how to write a uh, Noah extension and how to add a matter to OpenStack API uh, so all uh, other API reference and the code I, I think the code base is a great way for you to you know to learn how to make improvement around those project. And uh, with that, I think that's all uh, we want to share. Uh, is there any questions around this topic? How much, uh, how much work? Uh, sorry, I, I've been told that you, you, you have to talk with the speaker, uh, microphone at first. I'm wondering the, on the networking QoS, uh, how much uh, uh, you have been leveraged the existing Neutron QoS APIs? Not yet, actually. It's just uh, about to come in. So I think the, uh, there is a lot of stuff we, we have to do in, in the future. Is uh, Right now, we're just you know, directly hooking the backend infrastructure we produce to, to update the QS settings. And moving forward, you know, we have to you know, have the mechanism to merge all the requests and to have the uh, mechanism to decide so which one uh, we, we have to you know, commit to the QS backend. And like you mentioned, the, the Neutron QS is just coming. So we, we still are evaluating, evaluating you know, how it can be and uh, how to integrate with, uh, with this feature into our platform. And thanks for the questions. So, so if no more questions, I'm glad to, uh, yeah, I mean, glad to see you are here. And thanks for listening. I think that's all for today. Thank you.